hello viewer welcome back now we have a number of joints which we want to demonstrate but we'll just start with the simplest joint and key among them is the bat joint bat joint so in making the joint we need a number of uh, tools one is the tenon saw tenon saw we did a bit of tools last time so we have the tenon saw which we shall use very important as well is the tri square the tri square we, we are going to use it then we have another very important uh, item here we call it the bench hook the bench hook so the bench hook we will hook on the bench so i'll put it on the edge and once i'm working from here they cannot move it is stable they will just hook here or i can even turn it this way both sides i can use so this part is used to stop the the hook from moving and then i'll arrest my work at the other uh, hook there so this is a bench hook we use it very effectively for cutting on the bench so the joinery work is made easy when you have such pieces of equipment as as this you have enough tools then we have the marking tools as well so we categorize these tools according to the purpose so we have the marking tools which will include the the tip measure the tip measure we talked about it and it has different calibrations on it so if you want to measure in feet as some of us are used we have the feet on the on the upper side of the tip and also on the upper side we have the inches uh, we also use the, the the centimeters many of us are used to centimeters so if we want to use the centimeters they are on the lower side of the tip and we can see them uh, clearly then we also use the, the the lower side also to measure the millimeters so if you are using the millimeters we will just read on the centimeter part and then we will just interpret uh, 10 millimeters make one centimeter so for every one centimeter we have little small calibrations of 10 10 10 between the letters or rather the numbers and that will make the millimeters so at this point we will have 100 millimeters we will have 200 millimeters we will have 250 millimeters and then we will measure millimeters one by one so with the proper use of the tip, we will be able to achieve precisely to the millimeter, the measurements we want. And then we have the pencil, very important, a sharp pencil to do very good work. So the measuring tools are, are grouped there. Then we have the cutting tools, which we have uh, the, the tenon saw, as well as the chisels, the chisels, you have them here Ten on saw is here these are the the cutting tools that we're going to use then we have the holding tools uh, here is the f clamp the f clamp many of us are used to the g clamp i know but the f clamp is also a very good option because of the, its quick grip if i want to grip this piece of wood i don't have to turn to turn to turn to turn until i get that I'll just either pull it down or pull it up and then I'll clamp it to the bench. I'll just clamp it, tighten it a bit and then it will be firm, it cannot move. So it's a quick grip and also it provides for a very good grip on the bench. So the bench has a bench vise as well. We have a bench vise here and we have another one here similar to that. So I'm going to use this one because it is nearer to me uh, to have a, it has a clutch so if I want to move it fast I'll just press the clutch and then press it either in or out and once the piece that I want to hold uh, is grabbed a bit then I'll tighten it with a screw and then it will be well uh, firmly gripped so I'll be able to use it 
Uh, so for now, I want to introduce the first joint. We call it the BAT joint, B-U-T-T. BAT joint is the simplest and again the weakest joint that we have in carpentry and joinery. So it is the simplest, it's as well the weakest joint. So the BAT joint will just be uh, <coughs> a combination of two pieces just brought together that way. Now, that is a bat joint. So, to illustrate, or rather to, 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 to make the joint firm, we use various ways of strengthening the joint. So, to strengthen the bat joint, we can either glue it, but gluing also, is a, it, will, it will still remain weak. If we just glue, we can glue and clamp. So, it's still not a very good option. Uh, we can both now glue and also use dowels on it. We can use dowels where we drill on this part. We have a hole, say 10 millimeters, 10 millimeter hole here and here. And also we drill two holes here and here. And then we put a dowel. A dowel will look like, uh, will be round like this piece of pencil. Uh, let's say... Uh, 70 millimeters we cut it and then we fit it on this side fit it on the other side then we bring them together so simply that is a bat joint but there are many ways of strengthening the bat joint uh, it will also depend on the on the use that we want to use that joint so we have the roof work which falls under carpentry if you're using the bat joint as a lengthening joint for roof work then we may be required to use a cleat. A cleat will be, will be just another piece of, uh, of timber that we're going to use and nail. Nail it now to this one, nail it as well to this one so that it, it provides some continuity between the two pieces and then the bat joint is well uh, strengthened in that way. We may also use the dowels for joinery uh, so we can use uh, many other ways of strengthening the bath joint uh, depending on the use at hand. So to cut the bath joint it's just as simple as cutting the, the, the end 90 degrees square and cutting it well. So I'm going to demonstrate that then we see the use of the bath joint. So I'll put this piece aside uh, bring my bench bench hook near and then I'll use a tri square and a pencil to mark so on the edge I'll consider about five millimeters from the end and then I'll put a pencil mark this side is the face this side I'll consider it the edge so I'll use the face now to mark the edge here One line, one line. Then I again use the face to mark the edge. So I now have my piece well marked. The process of marking out is very important. It comes before in a cutting. So we normally say you measure twice, cut once. Because once you cut, you cannot undo. But once you mark, you can undo if you had made a mistake. So I'll put it here, the bench hook. Then I'll use my tenon saw. So the tenon saw has a very good back. It is firmly uh, strengthened on the back, so that it makes a very straight cut. And then I'll guide the saw. Guiding the saw mean, means the saw that will not have a chance to, 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 to go aside as I start. So I'll use my finger to start and then I'll pull the saw backwards, forward, backward, forward until I make a saw calf. The saw calf, K-E-R-F. The saw calf is the, the, the path made by the saw during the cutting process. So I'll obs observe the two lines. So 
So during cutting, if I consider this line and this line on my side accurately, then the other one will come automatically. So I'll just continue cutting and checking from all sides. You can see how stable my piece is. And as I finish, I go slowly, slowly for me to maintain the edge well cut. So here is my cut piece. It is completely square. Then I'll repeat the same process on the other one, on the other side. And then I will put my two pieces together. They will form a bat joint. So the bat joint, again, we have said this is the, 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 the simplest joint, it's as well the weakest joint. So unless we strengthen the bat joint, then it cannot entirely work on its own, the way it is right here. So that is the, the use, or rather the preparation, the cutting and putting together of the, of the bat joint. Now, if I want to use it the way it is, I'm going to, to, to glue it together. I'm going to hold it with a sash clamp. And for small items like toys and small items that doesn't require a lot of strength, we sometimes use the butt joint the way it is. It can as well be used as a corner joint where I put uh, the head about the side or rather the, the, the face like that, that is still a bad joint. And as well, I can use it this way. So the bad joint can be placed in any way, but the, the concept does not change. Right now, we have the, 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 the grain, the grains running down and the head grains meeting. We can as well use the tenon, or rather the, sorry, the dowel on that side, and it becomes tight. Then we can use it as a lengthening joint. We can as well use it as a widening joint. Widening is making the piece wider. We can use it, the bat joint as a widening joint. We can use it as a lengthening joint. We can use it as an angle joint. So in any way, we want to use the bat joint is quite flexible. But remember, it's the weakest joint unless strengthened. So we are going to strengthen the, weak, the, the bat joint for us to get a good bond and a good corner on it. So that brings us to the end of part one of the bat joint, where we have considered the making of the joint as well as putting it together. So for now, we will take a short break and we'll be back to get uh, to the next joint. Keep tuned.